And you know, Father always sees us as children, no matter what age we are. And didn't Jesus say, this is something unique, didn't he say, remember the disciples, they were arguing over who was the greatest, you know, always doing that. They got themselves in a lot of trouble if you read the Gospels. And arguing over who is the greatest, and, and Jesus pulled a little child next to him, and he says, he that is greatest in the kingdom should be as an innocent child. Hello. And then he goes on in another part of the gospel. He says, woe unto those that offend the innocent child. He's talking about the innocent Christian, the baby Christians that are just now growing up. How many here know we're growing at different levels? Some of us are at different levels in our growth. Some of us are different levels in our understanding. Well, today I have something from the throne. <laughs> I don't want to give you anything that isn't. Can you say amen? amen. Say this with me. I am who God says I am. I, am I can do what God says I can do. I'm blessed going in. And I'm blessed going out. I'm a doer of the word. That means I am blessed in what I do. I'm a doer of the word. And I'm blessed in what I do. In Jesus' name. Now, the Bible says that we need to confess a good confession among many witnesses. That's what we just did. We made a good confession to everybody because that's what we believe. Can, can you say amen? And the Bible says when we do that, the high priest of our confession will whisk us up into the glory and the presence of God, see, and say, I'm all about you being with God. I'm not about me being anybody. I died a while ago. What do you mean, Pastor Kerry? Well, Jesus said to me, he says, son, you can't live for me in the natural. Amen. You have to live through me in the natural. Amen. If I'm not there, then the main component is missing. Can you say amen? And we like to venture out on our own. We think we've got a handle on things. We, we need to realize there's a balance in our walk. He that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Amen. So grab your notes. If you got notes, grab your Bible. If you got your Bible, we're going to get into this. We've been doing a series called Reigning in Life in Christ. And guess what? Today we're celebrating what? All right. So the subtitle is God Our Valentine. told you that valentine means valiant strong and mighty would that describe god yes so he's our valentine amen and of course the world always takes things and kind of plays with them have fun you guys learn about god all right amen so basically as we study i want to turn around and read our scripture our god our valentine okay all right, so all of us are like children, okay? We got that point. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, we know that we are of the truth. Okay, here it is. And we shall assure or strengthen our hearts before him. Next. next. There's no 20. 
I need to have my bobble up here. Okay. Ah, so how did that happen? A anyway, it's okay. He made, I love technical difficulties. Yeah, it's 19 through 20. 18, 19, and 20. Huh? Okay, all right. We'll just, we'll just leave it there. All right, a couple of notes I want to give you before we actually give you the four points. And that is, the love of God is an action called compassion. Now, again, I have defined them last week, and we'll do it again. There are four Greek words for love. Only one comes from God. Now, the problem with a lot of us is we're trying to understand how can I love my enemies because we're thinking we're doing that in our own strength, our own natural ability. How many know that there's people out there you, you got to just stay away from, and, and I'm being honest, but you can love them from a distance. We call it prayer. Come on. You're a child of a living God. So let me go through them real quickly. First, human love is eros. That's a human love between husband and wife. Philema, philia, or Philadelphia, which means friendship, love. And you don't have to write them down. You got them last week, I hope. And the next one was storge. And this is one people don't understand. That's the kind of love that grows. Let's say if you are in a partnership with your wife, maybe in a business. Before, it's a little edgy, a little edgy and everything. But you grow to work together almost in a companion and unity. That's storge love. Hello. And how many know that marriages won't work unless you have a little storge love in there? Amen. Sex alone is not going to keep your marriage together. You need a lot of that love. But here's the problem. Jesus said for us to love those that persecute us, love our enemies, do good to those that hurt you. In order to do that, we've got to understand his compassionate agape love. And I'm not going to stay long on this, but I want to let you know, it's a supernatural, if you're writing this down, supernatural love that moves you beyond what you can see or hear into the heart of who you're talking to. Jesus did not consider the people sitting in the temples down there in the marketplaces as being sinners. He didn't look at them as wine bibbers and, and publicans like everybody accused him. He looked at them as a potential child of his that was lost. Now he wants to bring them back to him. We should be willing to take the message of the gospel to anybody God leads us to. Can you say amen? We're bringing water to a desert. Hello? Maybe you work at a job where you're the only Christian there. Don't up and quit. That might be the only light that they have. So we need to pray before we make large decisions in our life just to keep us out of mischief and trouble. Can you say amen? All right. So again, we have phileo, eros, storge, and then agape. Compassion is agape love in action. Jesus moved with what? Compassion. Okay, I need to say this one more thing, and then we'll get into the lesson. Compassion, if you can imagine. How many here have a garden hose to your house? How many know that if you took the volume of, put in that garden hose, and if you made the hose twice as big, you'd have more water flowing out? Compassion is just like a garden hose. Okay? The, when we move in love, in compassion of God, God's power is not hindered. It flows out like that. So if you watch anybody that's ministering, there's a new lady out. Please watch what the comments are. Her name is Catherine Crick. And she has quite a ministry. She's out of Australia. People are already running her down. That's a good way to find out good things are happening. But anyway, a channel of love. You are a channel of flow. Can you say amen? Aren't we a vessel? We are a vessel. And God says in the last days, I will pour out my... Spirit upon all flesh. What you don't understand, not only does God pour it out from above, but he pours it out from you. So are you full of God? Or are you just trickling around? <laughs> Come on, you can laugh at me. How can you tell somebody doesn't have much of God in them? No problem telling. 
Come on, laugh with me. Now, again, you'll listen. I've tried to do this. I don't put down with my preaching, but it's very practical. It applies. So remember this one rule. If I preach it and it doesn't fit you, don't make yourself fit it. Don't bring yourself, try to get your foot in the shoe. All right? If, if you're not that, move on. <laughs> it's from somebody that needs to hear it. Do not apply everything to you unless you need to hear it. And certainly don't do what I used to do. I used to always wish my ex-wife was here to hear the word. Notice I said ex. Now, I'm not trying to put that down. I'm not trying to make light of that because I believed in marriage forever. But you know what? Both parties have to meet it. <laughs> believe in that. Both parties have to have Jesus between them, holding their marriage together. Without that, <clears throat> come Sarah, Sarah. Here we go. All right, these four points we're going to cover. See, man? Amen. All right. I also get to cook steak for you today. So make sure you tell my wife or someone how you like it. Okay. All right. So here are the four things. How did you stick that in there? Well, I'm just your friend. All right. So one, two, and three, four. The first thing we're going to cover is the Father's actions of love. We know that he moved in love, huh? Can you say amen? Two, living free in God's love. Christians don't live free in God's love very often because they usually get caught up in something and it binds them up. We want to keep you free from that. Can you say amen? Living free in God's love. Third thing is being led by the Spirit in love. Christians, listen, we have a Bible, don't we? An Old Testament and New Testament. Awesome. It gives us a blueprint for our life, doesn't it? But for specifics, to get specifics, you need the Holy Spirit to show you how to apply that word, when to apply it, how to apply it, and to whom it's applied to. So we can read the word, but without the Holy Spirit guiding us of when and where, how, then we are going to be very general in our ministry. But every one of you, in one degree or another, you are a minister of the gospel. You're a carrier in an infectious gospel full of the Spirit. Say amen. So we need the Holy Spirit to give us the details so that he lengthens our day and we don't waste our day. I'm going to stop and pause here for a minute. This, by the way, this glass, this was the winner. Remember, years ago I asked for somebody to get a glass. 40 bucks to the winner who gets me this glass. That was a long time ago. If you're new, don't worry about that. It's just something we did. Back then we were smaller. And so they end up getting me that, that little red glass. And Sherry, if you're watching, I know you are. And I don't know, you can't have this red glass. So anyway. And then, of course, fourthly, we're going to cover don't react, but learn to respond in love. Don't, react. don't be a reactant Christian. You see, I have a very demonstrative face, Sherry. And when somebody says something, if I don't hold that face in God, you're, you're liable to see some stuff, you know. Disappointment. How about you? When you're disappointed, can people tell? Yeah. The, one, the one person you don't want them to know is the enemy. So learn to let Jesus maintain your joy. Can you say amen? Because the joy of the Lord is our? There you go. Maintain your joy. If your joy is getting down, refocus. Because joy lives in you. Can you say amen? Refocus. Because remember, we're a creature that absorbs. So if you're focusing on the wrong things too long, it is actually going to affect your moods. And we don't want that to happen. Is this making sense to you? Yeah. All right, so we're going to cover these four things. The Father's actions of love. Two, living free in God's love. Three, leading, uh, being led in the spirit in God's love. And four, don't react but respond in God's love. Are you ready? Let me take a quick sip. We're going to have your Bible and turn it to 1 John chapter 3. Now, this love is talking about is agape. We are to understand, we're to dwell on it long enough to understand the power of this love. So look what it says right here. 
Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, or because of this, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. They crucified him, didn't they? Two, beloved, now we are the children of God. And listen to this phrase. This is John the Beloved. And it, was, and it, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, when he comes to get us, we shall be like him. So what that is saying to us is none of us have got there yet. Can you say amen? We're still learning. Can you say amen? God is still revealing who we are in him. Hello? Don't, folks, I'm amazed. I'm going to just share a personal conviction. I'm amazed at how many churches don't teach you how to walk with God. They teach you how to be good. Don't get mad at me. And if you do this, you read your Bible, and you do this, and you do this. I'm not, remember, I'm not putting anything down. The, the devil likes to exchange the truth for something that sounds like it. He exchanged the power and the anointed word of God to psychology and what if. You go watch a few things on, on TV. Some of good preachers are good ones. And then there are others that got large congregations, they're preaching psychology. Or another thing that God does not like right now, and that is preaching against other ministries. Please don't get involved in any of that, okay? That's strife, isn't it? Well, what if that ministry up the street is completely off the wall? Let God deal with them. Don't they belong to God? Can you pray for them? But see, when we start talking about that, we get out from our protection hedge, out where the enemy can slap us silly. So we don't talk bad about God's property, do we? Even if blankety-blank minister is doofity doofing around, we leave him in God's hands. Why occupy our conversation in something that's not edifying? Come on, say amen. We want, you, we want you to be the champions God made you to be. In order to do that, we've got to kill some of those little foxes too. You know, the ones that nip at your heel and little vines. The ones that in the background the enemy brings up. Thank God, the past is the past. Yesterday is gone. If anybody brings up your past, you know who's been whispering. Moving right along. All right, you ready? So it goes on. It has not been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he comes, we shall see him. We should be like him. So let me cover a couple of points. Church, I believe we are walking, waking up to the truth, even though, look, go back 120 years. Turn of the century. Look at how much we've grown and know now. But the problem lies in our moral, spiritual walks. We got technology coming out the yin-yang. We got stuff here, people running there. Daniel's knowledge will increase. Travel will be increased. Everything. It will just grow immensely. Why? The Antichrist needs the equipment. <laughs> Folks, we're going to be leaving soon. We need to be ready. You know, all other people that preach the rapture, you know, they're just kind of... Listen, don't get caught up in that. Amen. You get caught up in expecting God to turn, return at any moment. Say amen. That keeps you expected. That keeps you fresh. That keeps you watching and things that God asks you to do. Hello. Amen. Now listen, we are not to look for the world's approval. you got a lot of churches today, not to put them down, but they look and smell like the world. That's not, how are they going to know there's a God if they can't see any difference between us and the world? Think about it. And then it goes on in my notes and it says, God, the world wants to see us living for God. But we don't need to seek man's approval. Say amen. Third thing, the way in which God reveals things to us is by having us focus on his son, which opens up the heaven. The Holy Spirit sees that we're concentrating on his son, Jesus Christ. The Father grants it. The Spirit then takes us, moves us into truth, opens our eyes, and we're beginning to understand as he teaches us the word. 
You see, I can teach you the word. And, but if I teach by the Holy Spirit, then it comes out of my mouth into your understanding, and God takes it from there and starts teaching you other things. That's how preaching and teaching is all about, to lift you up. And, and as you receive it, God starts speaking to you, and things come alive. You start growing. We're supposed to grow width, length, breadth, and height. We're supposed to grow in four dimensions. Not some oblong Christian who walks around, can't get their life together. No, we're not some freak. We are the children of the living God. Look at somebody and say, I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> all right, come on, laugh with me a little bit. All right, all right. My fourth point is notice this is our hope. Our hope is in Christ. Now, let me explain. Hope, it says, if hope is put down or if you share or preach where there's no hope, people get sick. Did you know that? Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. That's what the proverb says. Hope gives us image, gives us vision, right? Faith is a substance or brings substance to things, what? Hope for. Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith brings substance to the things hope for. So let's do it real quick. Hope is the thermostat in your life. Faith is the power to get you there. You all have God's faith. Say, I have God's faith. I don't have to grunt my faith out, but you got to have hope. You see, hope paints pictures, gives you images. That's why we have the word. The word's job is to give us hope of the future, hope with Christ, hope with these things. And when the word is being preached, it's supposed to give you hope. It's supposed to preach and paint hopeful, hopeful pictures. Oh, what God wants for you, how he wants to get you there, so that your faith can bring substance to it. Now abide faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these, though, is charity, or God's agape, compassion. So here's how it works. you got to get in the Word to get better pictures than what the world's printing out. <laughs> Don't be listening to the bad news, be getting in the good news. Amen? And let God paint your hope for you. Then your faith goes to work for something. But if all you do is look at the world, look at the problems, look at this, talk about this, then your faith doesn't have anything to work for. It just sits. And we do that. How often do we always talk the obvious? Look at your neighbor and say, you know, why is it when the dog is biting my leg, I go, gee, there's a dog biting my leg. That's what we do. When the enemy throws something out, you talk about it. And he goes, oh, get into him. Gee, what a sucker. You see. So remember, he's your enemy. Amen. Not brothers and sisters, even though they do his bidding. And let's get a hold of us. So you've got to have, you've got to have a right images. We have the Bible for that. We, got, we have faith because we have God's faith in us. We have God in us. And love, did you know how love fits? Love causes faith to work. Love energizes faith. Faith worketh or energizes by love. So you got to have faith, hope, and love. Say amen. You have that. You have Jesus. All right, say point one's done. Let's go to point two. Living free in God's love. And as you go there, I want to read a scripture to you, okay? Ephesians, excuse me, no, Galatians chapter 1, for you, but I'm going to read. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us, and given himself as an offering, a sacrifice of God, a sweet-smelling aroma. Everyone say, God loves good smells. Now, let me explain. Did you know when you're in faith and you're in love with God, you produce in the spirit a wonderful aroma? If you want to read about that, you'll find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 where Paul says, for some people, they bring forth an aroma of death and others bring forth an aroma of life. 
Now, I asked you a long time ago, this will, for you new people, this is what will help you. How does the devil pick up when to attack you? Just the funny, when you start to smell. When we're negative, when we're down, when we're talking about the problem with this, and i got to have this and stuff, we're in the flesh. And the flesh is what? It starts to produce something we don't like. Say, oh, me. Anyway, but when you're in faith and in love and you constantly meet with God so you get cleansed of those things, you put off a wonderful aroma that attracts the power of God. Faith attracts God just like fear attracts the devil. Hello? Remember Adam when he fell? When God came to visit him, where was Adam? Out of fear, he was in the bushes. How many of your children are still in the bushes? We can pray them out. Don't worry. We can pray them out. We just need to focus the light. You see, you can't pray general prayers over your kids. And you can't focus on all the stuff they do. Because right now, they don't even know why they're doing it. Now, we need to pray and ask God to bring a couple of good angels and start molding their decisions. Did you know you could do that? Come back next week. I'll teach you how to, we'll, we'll go into the, how to release God. Now, remember, the Holy Spirit is waiting for us to do something. What is it? First, believe. He needs for us to believe. Did you know believing in God draws God to you? It does. Now, folks, it works the other way. If you believe in that other junk, you will draw the devil to you. We're conduits. We're attractor beams. Either one or the other is working on us. And let me say this again. I love saying it. Nobody's caught me on this yet. Is there anything that you ever thought of that's original? No. So don't own things as if you, you're smarter than everyone else. Enjoy what God's teaching you. Say amen. amen. Are you enjoying this lesson? Yes. All right. Okay, living free in God's love. That's Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast. What? Having done all to stand? Stand. What is a standing? It's easy. Who lives in you? Okay. Who... Who do you live in? Actually, the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. If any man be in Christ. See, you're not just with Christ. You're inside of him. The trouble is, your mind doesn't think that way. And until it's taught, won't think that way. So I'm telling you that's what it is. So if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, I'd say the devil's going to have a headache. But see, we have to acknowledge that's true, and we have to believe what God said, that is true. When we do, it becomes a reality. Hello? I remember the first time, maybe you did too, you laid hands on somebody and you actually got healed. <laughs> to your utter amazement. You go, wow, God. But the next time you do, you're encouraged to do it again. Now, listen, it's not your job to get people healed. Listen to this. Every time you pray for somebody's healing, healing comes. Otherwise, God's a liar. But it has to be received to the one that's receiving the healing. And sometimes people need to be taught how to receive. Let me ask you, everybody that got was healed by Jesus, did they get healed instantly? No. no. Some as they went, some returned healed. Some had to go do things. It's our faith that draws God into our healing. Can you say amen? All right. Here we go. So stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again in the affairs of this life. Oh, the yoke of bondage. <laughs> You're not supposed to be caught up in the world. Yes, the world's going to affect you. Yes, you have bills to pay and a job to do and all that. But that's not your life. 
That's just part of the life that you put in God's hands. Have you put your job in God's hands? You'll find things smooth out better that way. Have you put your children in God's hands? Have you actually mentioned their name and say, Father, I put this child in your hands. I take my hands off so that you will keep them. If you've done that, wonderful. If you're not, try that. Works better. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, so we see, don't be entangled again. So the enemy wants to re-entangle us in bondage. He can't stand us being happy, being free. He can't stand us being full of God and sharing the joy of the Lord with somebody. He wants us upset in some kind of struggle, so we're walking around going, like we sucked on some bitter end, some persimmon. You ever had a persimmon? Bite into that thing, your whole mouth is, woo, woo. I don't know whoever, God, did you make those? Anyway, so go with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 through 16. Living free in God's love. Listen to the way John preaches this. Remember John the beloved? Of all the disciples, he was the one who loved Jesus the most. Wouldn't he say that? Didn't he say that? And he was the one who always rode shotgun with Jesus, always sitting next. Peter just got upset. You know, Peter says, how often should I forgive my brother? Seven times? He was talking about John. How often do I have to forgive my brother John? He's always irritating me. Maybe you didn't know that, but see, I've been, I've been studying since I, anyway. John, here's something you need to know, and God left it in there for us. John got real close to Jesus, didn't he? Who lived the longest? They couldn't kill him. There might be something in to our walk and getting close to Jesus that he would sustain us. Too much preaching. You're going to get killed for Jesus and you're going to be this and the bottom's going to come out and the country's going to do this. The country's going to do that. And Jesus said, take your eyes off the world. Now, what are we going to do? Believe all these naysayers? Or are we going to take our eyes off the world? And he said, put them on me, because I'm going to take you into a kingdom that is not moved by physical things, but it's moved by the Spirit of God. We dwell in the kingdom of God. Say amen. amen. Jesus sees that we do. But you got to stay within your hedge. You can't run around like you used to. That's the problem. Satan is hoping you'll go back to the old ways. I tell you, they're too boring. I don't want to go back to them. Too much trouble involved. No one has seen God at any time. That's the Father. We see Jesus so he can show us the Father. No one has seen God the Father at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. What love is this? Agape. You can't have sloppy agape unless you got Jesus. (laughs) I'm joking about that. You can't have operate in agape love unless you have Jesus in your heart. So the people of the law, did they have Jesus in their heart? Did the Pharisees, the Sadducees have? No. No. They were religious. They were good people, but they were religious. They couldn't love the way Jesus loved. Therefore, they didn't know the love of God. That's why he says, Philip, how long have you been with me? You've seen me. I look just and act just like the Father. <laughs> He's not the father. He's just like him. So we study Jesus to get to know the father. Can you say amen? No one comes to the father except through me. In that day, you shall ask nothing in my name. Whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. You see, when the disciples were walking with Jesus, they just said, hey, Christy, hey, Jesus. But but, what about, but, but, what about, well, when Jesus left, now you have to go to the father in Jesus' name. Why? Because it strains out all those that are not serious. And then you hear, oh, I pray it in your behalf. I pray it in your name, oh, Lord. Stop doing that. That's an insult. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. So it's like putting the hotline. Father, in Jesus' name, that's a prayer, 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 prayer. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Bam! It's completely anointed, completely protected, and Satan cannot mess with it. He can only mess if there's people involved. He can only mess with their heads trying to hold back them giving what God told them to give to you. 
Hello? So if I'm believing for something where there's four or five people involved, then I have to pray for them too so they all work together. Can you say amen? Are you learning anything? Oh, we're only on two. What's the matter? All right. So he says, and we have, and I says, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because, this is, this is uh, verse three, because he has given us of his spirit. Verse 14, it says, And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. And whoever confesses says the same thing, that Jesus is the Son of God. God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believe the love, the agape that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in God. You're covered. Hello. Well, what do I do? What if something upsets me and I'm, I'm not in love? Stop. Why do you have to keep going that way? Just stop. Say, oh, Lord, okay. Back in the spirit. Back in the spirit. What do you do when your car is heading off to the ditch? Go, oh, Lord. <laughs> you, you hold on the steering wheel for one, amen, and you slightly make a correction. You don't jerk it to the right or jerk it to the left like a lot of Christians I know. They're up and down, in and out, because they're not close to God yet. Don't panic. Don't get mad at them. Just say, hey, I know what's missing. What? You getting with God every day. He changes your rough edges. He rubs them all out and makes you come alive in him. Say amen. Amen couple of points. Church, we were made to be with God. Anything else doesn't work. To worship him is to give him honor, to admire him, to bow down in respect, to show forth our love for him all throughout the day. In all our ways, acknowledge him. To acknowledge God means to be aware of him and talk with him throughout your day. I talk to him like he's right here in my passenger seat. Right here with the store, I just don't do it in front of people who look crazy. But I say, hey, Jesus, I got three different products here. Which one's the best? Beep. Hello? How many times have you told you where something was when you've been looking all over and you say, all right, Lord, as soon as you say that, boom, there they are. You know, come on. He's waiting to get us and to work with us, but we're not giving him. Please don't get mad at me the time that he needs for us to change. We've got to give him enough time for him to bring about that change. So you maybe have to rearrange some of your schedule a little more so you get a little better results. Please, it's all for your benefit. The consistent believer abiding in the factor with God puts us in God's hands and God's favor. We really need that. And we are to be loyal to him. Can you say amen? We're to be faithful to God. Why? Because in so doing, we'll be strengthened. We're not being faithful because he wants us to. We're being faithful because we know we love him. And it's just a part of what we want to do. You see, I love my wife. I love her more today than I did when I first married her. Hello, that's that storge love in the gape. It's growing. Can you say amen? I love God. When I, I first met him, I loved him. But now I love him even more than I, I first met him. Can you say amen? Here's another thing. I knew my dad had a good father. He took good care of us and, and everything. But it wasn't until later on I got to really know him. So Christians, don't know him by what everybody else says. Know him through his word and by the spirit, by spending time with him. When you spend time with your father, you get to know his character and his nature. Say amen. And you'll find out when somebody says, oh yeah, you're going to go through the tribulation. You'll feel like, that's not God's nature. Because the trip, you know, I mean, all kinds of things. God send you through the mud. We're all going to go through the crud. And we'll come out somehow by the glory of God. Say amen. Don't say amen. That is religion. That's religion. Come on. Am I, all, am I doing all right? You see, 
yin and yang are Satan's idea. You know what yin and yang is? That's the white little drop and the black little drop, and you spin them, they all become one. Satan wants you to think that the evil and the good that happens to you all comes from the hand of God. And here's the lie he says. God is sovereign, therefore everything that comes into the planet is by the hand of God. Is that right? What's the devil doing here? You see, you be careful of what people represent as truth. It's got to pan out to the nature of Christ. Get those Bible studies on Wednesday. We're teaching you how to discern some stuff. Wonderful things. And if not, I wish we could record them. Danny's done his best on that. All right, shall we go on? Go with me to 1 John chapter 2. Look at verse 15. Tells us that we need to be really sharp, be able to divide the word of truth. Do not love the world, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the the world, the love of the Father is not what? Here's what happens. God lives in our spirit man. Say spirit man. He influences our soul. Everyone say soul. And I have to bring my body under subjection. That's you as a Christian. God lives in your spirit. He's complete in there. But he grows up as a seed. How many know if I took a seed, put it in your flower garden, that that seed is complete. It's complete. Although it's in seed form. When you accept Jesus, he comes in on a seed form. This is, I'm just going to help somebody. Then it's up to us to take the seed form of Jesus into the presence of God so he can water it and germinate it and have the life pop out, start growing. And the more we get into the presence of God, remember Satan always wants to make you too busy to do that. He matures that seed quicker. So more presence of God, quicker it grows. More presence of God, quicker it grows. So we don't want religion. We don't want just the preaching of the word. We want the presence of God. Say amen. Because that you in the presence of God causes Christ to grow in you. He develops. If you don't believe about the seed, Galatians is a good one uh, that tell us, because it says if we receive Christ, then we're Abraham's seed. Is a great kind of, as long as there's a world that we see time and harvest. So we receive Jesus as the seed. Remember the sower soweth the word? And some of the seed bet, fell by the wayside. So he's talking about a type and shadow that God's in your heart like a seed. And he will take over if you let him grow and develop. But the only way he can grow and develop is not by the elements out in the world, by you trying out things. It's by you being in your prayer life because we own, listen, very careful. And maybe you want to uh, challenge me on this, but the only time you grow spiritually is in your prayer life. Because God's the only one who can develop spiritually. Now, we develop in character and we develop in doing and don't doing by when we're out there applying the word. But our spiritual develop, development happens in the presence of God. So, if you're never in the presence of God, you're going to be a baby Christian all your life. You'll still be saved, but you'll be young. You won't know anything. Because it's the time with the Father that he opens our eyes. You have a very limited brain. And until you get it into the presence of God, and he takes the caps off of it, you'll never have the eyes of your understanding and light like you need. That's why... Pastor Kerry says, get in there. I'll drop kick you right into the prayer life there. Get in it because you're going to wonderfully, God is going to wonderfully expand yourself. Say amen. You're not going to develop out there just going to church. Although this is a great church. There's a lot of good churches. But you have to be in that presence of God. Come unto me, all you the labor and heavy laden. And I shall give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my ways are gentle and meek. And you shall find rest to your souls. But we have to keep coming to them. Coming. Come to me. We hear it. But it actually the Greek says keep on coming. 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 Coming again and again. Keep coming to me. Keep coming to me. Why? I'm growing up the seed of my very presence in your spirit. Keep coming to me. You want to grow quick? Keep coming to them. And not huge lengths of time. Listen, 
I can spend 10 minutes with a sincere heart with God and get more done than spend an hour with him with just popping off stuff. Best the sincerity of your heart to God and let him develop the new creation in you. All right, let's go to the third point. Yeah, it's about time. All right. Three, we need to be led by the Spirit in love. Say amen. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 through 16. Or 15. Listen to what it says. For the love of Christ compels us. It moves us. Compassion moves us. Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, that's Jesus, then all died. Didn't we die in him? Yes. Stop living for ourselves. All died. And he died for all. And those that live should no longer live for them. There you go. That's the problem a lot of Christians have. It. They put God only in the, I only need you when I want to borrow you. I call sandbag prayer. Lord, it's a disaster. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Why don't you just have a good maintenance program? Do what you're supposed to do, and then the rest of the day, enjoy what he does for you. Why are Christians so stressed, so messed? I tell you, it's not good teaching. It's not encouraging them to be with God. Our God is a master at his design for our life. Surrender every day and say, I want your design for my life. I want what you have for my life. God, help me to get there. Then listen. So you got that scripture? Okay. 1 Peter 3 verse 8 says, Finally, all of you be one mind. See, when you come to church, it's not about you. It's about you receiving and working together. Let's get revival out here. Revival happens when we work together. It isn't something God says, oh, today I'm going to bring revival. God sits up on his revival throne and goes, yep, I'm bringing revival today. No, it's when we gather as one, focus as one, and lift one voice, power drops and revival comes. But we have to stay that way consistently. Remember Azusa Street, Wales Revival. I've studied all the revivals. It all started with a little group like this, meeting consistently, praying consistently, and God swept through the land. If you want to, by the way, anytime you want to ask me a question, you can go to my message in my Facebook area, and I'll send you clips on stuff. You want to know about a special thing I can't teach you myself? I'll send you some of the best teaching. I don't send out junk. Little clips on specialties and stuff. So learn as a Christian. I know that the enemy's been trying to shut Christians down. Learn to ask questions. You finally came to a place where we have some answers. Hello? Not all the answers, but enough to make you happy. Certainly straighten my life out. All right, now remember, that's not a brag. That's just what God is doing here. Having one mind, all right? First John chapter 3, look at verses 10 and 11. Same point, being led by the Spirit in love. First John 3, 10 and 11. Now, he's, John is talking about recognizing a child of God. And he says, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are right there in front of your eyes manifest. Whoever does not practice being right with God is not of God. Nor he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning that we should love one. Uh, what kind of love are we to do that with? Agape. You see, agape love doesn't look at the faults of others, it looks at the potential child of God. Hello? Because if you look at the fault of others, your whole entire speech to them is going to be different. You see them one way, and that's not the way God sees them. We need to see people the way God sees us so that when we talk, they can hear God come out of our voice. Can I have an amen from all of you? Amen. You know when I preach, you can feel God coming out of there. It is not anything I'm doing. 
I'm just letting God come out. Words are capsules. By the way, it's called a gospel. You fill words with spirit life when you talk. Slow down, formulate your words, especially in prayer. All right, let's go to the third point. Don't react, I mean the fourth point. Don't react, but respond in love. Can you say amen? Now, see, if I was your doctor, and I prescribed, take three of these pills a day until they're all gone, and then there's about a month's worth, and then I call you out the first two weeks, and I say, well, how's it going? How's the medicine working for you? And the person says, I don't know, I'm reacting to it. My wife had some medicine like that. Made her body ache and everything. We don't want to react to things. Say amen. We want to respond. Love responds. Love never reacts. Unless it's in love. What I mean by reacting, that's usually, that's that coil back. That's that, you know. How you doing? Why do you ask? (laughs) You, You see that kind of thing. Now, I like to ham it up a little bit because we get to these edges because all of us have areas that we're working on. But just listen. You get with God, you'll be surprised how quickly he removes them. It's the lack of being God that they hold on to us a little more than they should. All right, moving right along. Yes. All right, so don't react but respond. Look at 1 John chapter 3, 16 through 18. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. Verse 16. And we also ought to lay our lives down for the brethren. I mean, your self-life. But whoever has this world's goods, and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in, in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and we shall assure our hearts in love before God. Doing good things for people is a wonderful thing because it's a law of sowing and... Everyone say sowing and reaping works positive and negative. Well, let's say somebody did something or you saw, thought somebody did something out of maliciousness to you. Should you respond to that? No, because when you respond back to it, you're sowing more. And when we sow the wrong seed, we get the wrong seed. Now, here's the problem. Just being mad at somebody quickly and getting over, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about staying in that position of that habit of doing things. You're planting a crop, hello, of anger and frustration and all that, and that crop's going to grow up and come back and swallow you. Death and life are in the power of the... Hello. Oh, James spends a whole chapter about your tongue, how to use it right, and how the enemy can use it wrong. Hello? Did you know you have life in the power of your tongue? Did you know you can change your life in the power of your tongue? How many here didn't know that? How many here do? What did you do? How did you get Jesus in your heart? Jesus, come into my heart. You used your tongue. How you doing? Oh, that's just killing me. I'm dying if I do, dying if I don't. Oh, the things are not going right. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> are you married to one? You have relatives like that? Pray for them. Again, there's always hope for somebody if they're still breathing. If they stop breathing, stop praying for them. You're not Catholic. Nobody gets out of hell. It's appointed unto man to die once, then judgment. On that, let me throw out a little extra change. Who are the two witnesses in the book of Revelation? Some say it's Moses. Some say it's Enoch. Some say Elijah. Well, they argued over Moses' body. It's appointed unto man to die once and then judgment. Guess what? Enoch and Elijah are the only two that didn't die, so those are your two witnesses. The gospel is so simple. Even people can confuse it. Let me just tell you, don't be one of those people that are educated beyond your obedience. 
Say amen. Because you're intellectual thinking about the word and not following like a child from your heart. All right, and finishing. I don't know about, I could never stand 20 minute sermons. Okay, here we go. My little children, let us love not in word and tongue, but in deed and in truth. All right, a couple of points. Notice we are to respond in love, not react in the flesh. Say amen. If you catch yourself getting irritated and fried, just pull yourself aside. Go into the bathroom, flush the toilet, and start praying. If you ever go to your relative's house and everybody's uptight, you know, you just can feel it. Go into their bathroom, turn on the water, and bind up all those things and cast them out. As long as you're going to be there, you're going to have peace. Take charge where you go. You're going shopping, take charge of the store. You're going to go for a drive, take charge of your vacation. You're going to have a good time, a day off. You're going to go on a date with your wife, take charge and give it to God. So he covers and cleanses and sets it all up for your benefit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. It's all about you. Everything God does, everything God has been doing is about saving you. So would you work with the program? Come on. And those around you, share the gospel. Gospel isn't judgments coming on America. <sighs> Yes, it's coming, but that's not gospel. Gospel is, did you know, you may be sick, but Jesus has healing for you. Let's talk about it. Let's pray together. See, that's gospel. Difference. We represent the one who has eternal life. So as much as, here's what my conviction is. When I talk with anybody, and you can even remember, I always leave a little Jesus with them. Is it business? Leave a little Jesus with them. You're going to the mall? Have some tracks in your purse. Leave a little Jesus everywhere. Be smart as serpents, a wise as, but wise as dove. What is it? Crafty as serpents, wise as dove, something like that? In other words, you're the good guy. All right, let's go on. And done. Oh. So we now know that there's a chance every day for us to react or respond. Which one are we going to do? Respond. Which one are we going to do? Respond. Which one are you going to do? Respond. Amen. In love. All right. Finally finishing my last scripture. 1 John 4, 7 through 11. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Be he loved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. But going on, <laughs> amen, it says, verse 9, In this love of God, it was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son. He, he was the word before he became begotten. Do you understand that? And anybody here need to know what begotten means? That means he was born in the planet. Begotten. His only begotten son. See, He always was. But then he had begotten in the earth. That's another story. It'll take up another week or two. All right, so let's go on. All right, his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Do you see that term? Little words in the Bible are very important. How do we live? Through him. How do we live? Through him. So you slow down, you pray, you're in the spirit. When I reach my hand to pray for the sick, I'm reaching through him. Healing is there because Jesus is there. You see when I'm preaching and sharing Jesus, I bring Jesus out of my words and to the heart of the person that I'm talking to. They can feel the difference. They can feel that. Now, again, it sounds a lot of eyes, but that's the way you're supposed to be. Say amen. I learned the hard way. Please, avoid some of my pitfalls. <laughs> Hello? Don't fall into the same hole I did. Observe. And then avoid. Can you say amen? And then, finally, 
Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Did you get something out of that this morning? Would you give the Lord praise? Father, we love you. We appreciate you.